Hello, my friends, this is Jono. Hope you're safe and well. Today, I wanna to talk to you about Fitbit. You know, the company that makes those exercise bands that tell you how many steps that you've not done. Well, I'm not sure if you knew this, but Fitbit have built a pretty impressive community. They've got over a million members in their community, and many of these members show up every single week to help each other to become fitter and healthier. It's a pretty cool and inspiring place to be. But it all begs the question, what are Fitbit doing so well? Why is their community so successful? Well, I went and did an analysis of their community and, find, and found five key reasons why their community has been so successful. So I wanna share these five patterns with you so you can use them as food for thought and inspiration for your own community, okay? But before we get into these five patterns, let's take a quick look at what their community looks like. Now, when we dig in here, we can first of all see that it's essentially a discussion forum, okay? So you've got here categories on the left, um, and categories are essentially buckets of, of similar conversations. So if we click on get moving, this is clearly topics that relate to moving around and exercise and getting fit. And then we can click on an individual topic, which is a discussion, hiking with a dog. And this is a conversation about the topic of hiking with a dog. I wonder how many of you clock your steps by walking your dogs. And then here you can see all the different replies, right? And for each of these different replies, people can upvote them. See here, two upvotes for Heather M's, and then you can reply to an individual message inside of this discussion as well. So this is all pretty standard stuff, okay? So let's now dig into what these five different patterns are. And let's move to the board and get them on the board, all right? So one, two, three, four, five, okay? Now the first one I wanna talk about here is sim. Simplicity. And this is really important, okay? I've worked with hundreds of different communities, uh, hundreds of different companies to help them build communities over the years and many nonprofit uh, communities as well. And one of the challenges that I see all of the time is that people overcomplicate the community experience. And often they do it with really good intentions, right? Because in the, in the design phase of a community, people are often thinking, well, what can we do to add value to our community members? So they think of, different types of content that can be presented in the community and gamification and badges and incentives and rewards and integration with different platforms to be able to log in quickly and easily. And this is all great stuff, but often these ideas are stepping outside of the core reason why people go to the community in the first place, okay? And typically that is to have conversations and solve problems with like-minded people, okay? Now, what Fitbit have done is they've created a community that adds a lot of value, but they've simplified what that experience looks like. And let's take a quick look at what I mean by this. So when we come into the community, the first thing we can see right out of the gate is that it's attractive, right? You've got these little cartoony people here and above the fold and above the fold means everything that you can see before you scroll immediately we've got the ability to go and search content. And that's often what people are gonna to wanna to do when they come into a community platform. But also, what we can see here is that you can immediately select the product that you've got. So let's say I own a sense, okay? So I can click on this, and it takes me to all of the conversations, the, the topics that relate to my product, which is the sense. So to, with just one click, I'm now immediately zoned into material that is relevant to my interests, okay? So I can go in here, I can see all these discussions here. I can see, you know, some of the top labels here. Um, these are the, these are essentially keywords that relate to some of the most commonly discussed elements. So clearly notifications is discussed a lot about the sense. Um, and some of the most helpful authors. These could be people I might want to reach out to um, or who I can, you know, uh, observe some of their activity in the community there. Clearly Guy is very uh, active in, um, in discussions about the sense specifically, okay? Now, what I love about what they've done here is, let's say I click on um, uh, senses no notification vibrations a week, okay? So let's click on this particular topic. So Frinda here is saying, has anyone noticed that the senses no vi notification vibrations are a bit weak? I have it firmly attached and I can barely feel the vibrations. And here we can go and see the conversation, right? Now, what I wanna point out here that's really important is that this conversation takes up the full width of the page, okay? And one of the things um, that really bugs me about many online platforms um, and especially communities is that often you'll see the main content here, the body of content, which is this discussion here on one part of the page. And then you'll have a sidebar on this side or maybe this side that is packed with other stuff that's got nothing to do with this discussion, such as other conversations, or it might be tags, or it might be top 
um, you know, leaderboard members, or it could be links out to social media sites, or links out to other content, or links out to a YouTube channel. And the thing that the reason why this is a mistake is that at every point in a community, you have a mental modality that you're looking at, right? So let's go back to this one. So when we clicked on, actually, let's go right from the beginning, right? If we go to the community, and I've got a question about the sense. So I click on the sense. This zones me in immediately into things that are relevant to me. And then I'm actually curious. Oh, I've noticed that my senses vibrations are a little bit weak. So I click on this. When, I, when I'm in this view, all I care about right now is this topic. All I care about is this conversation and reading this conversation, right? Why would I want a sidebar that links out to tags and, and other content and social media platforms? It's irrelevant. So Fitbit have got, done a good job in making sure that at every view in their community, they focused on simplicity. Okay, this is really, really important. So what I'd recommend for you as you think about your community is always focus on what is the user looking for at that particular point in time, and then design your community experience to zone in on that specific mental modality at every step of the game, okay? So don't over clutter your community. You might be thinking, oh, we're giving them this menu of different things that they can click on. I can tell you this for sure, because I've done testing, that those sidebars with different bits of content most of the time, no one clicks on them. It's just clutter and it gets in the way of the experience. All right, let's move over. Well, let's move on rather to our second item here. And this is support. Okay. Now, one of the major reasons why people set up communities is to provide a place where people can go and ask questions and get help. Okay. And um, this is very, very common with companies who've got products and services. So Fitbit have got a, a variety of different products, right? We talked about the sense, but they've got various wristbands and, you know, uh, scales, I think they're called in the US, where you can stand on it and uh, it tells you how heavy you are, tells you how many cheeseburgers you need to stop eating. Well, um, Fitbit clearly want to provide a place where people can go and ask questions about their products. However, what they've also done is they've analyzed what do our audience really want, okay? And this is something I recommend you do with your community all of the time. And that is to say, what are the pain points and the roadblocks that are standing in the way of my audience's success? So if we think about the Fitbit community, well, what do they care about? Sure, they care about making sure that they can use their, their Fitbit product and to make sure that they can maximize the value out of the product that they purchase. But <clears throat> their needs go way beyond that because they're members of the community, not really just because they're using Fitbit products, they're members of the community because they've got a broader goal in mind. They want to get fit, they want to get healthy, they maybe they want to lose weight, maybe they want to increase their cardiovascular performance. Maybe they want to develop a, an exercise habit. But what's standing in the way? What are the pain points and roadblocks that stand in the way of that broader vision? Well, maybe they don't know what kind of foods they should be eating. Maybe they don't know how to exercise effectively. Maybe they don't know how to work around an injury. Maybe they don't have an exercise regime in place and they're struggling to put one in place. So Fitbit have clearly realized that when people come to their community, they don't just care about the products. What they care about is the broader vision that they, their users have got, which is getting fit and healthy, okay? This is really, really important. If you're building a community around a product or a service, which many of you will be doing, don't just focus on your products. That is one tiny portion of the journey, okay? So if we go back to our community, there's a couple of things I wanna highlight here. So first of all, again, from a support perspective, if we want to find a solution to a, to, 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 to a question, we can easily click on the product. We've already talked about that. But also, we've got these other health and wellness categories. So let's say we click on sleeping well. Now, in here, there's all kinds of conversations. And look at these. Inaccurate sleep log. Change your settings. Look how many views this has had. Look how many replies this has had, right? Look at some of these other ones. Is it possible to earn a 100 sleep score? Look how many replies, look how many views. Often the things that step outside of the core product offer the most interest to our members, okay? But what I do wanna zone in on is if we go back to the sense, <coughs> excuse me, and let's click on um, heart rate inaccurate on Fitbit sense, okay? So this is clearly a very, very popular topic, 24 pages of discussion here, but it all starts with Cameron Oates asking a question, is anyone else experiencing huge heart rate and accuracy during exercise with the sense? Okay. Now, there's a whole bunch of discussion down here. This is a very popular question, 96 votes, lots of discussion. But then what happens is you've got a little green bar here that says answered, go to the best answer. And it also says answered here. 
Now, with many community forums, what you have to do is people go and ask a question, and then you have to scroll all the way down and read all of this stuff, and then maybe your answer is down here, or maybe it's on page six, okay? And that's frustrating. But Fitbit have got a feature in their platform where when somebody answers the question, and it's marked as the solution, you can click on go to best answer, and it takes you to the solution, which here is presented by Sylvia Fitbit, who probably works for Fitbit, okay? And here we can see 10 votes. So this is a really great feature in um, in immediately pairing up the question with the answer, right? So if you see here, Cameron asked the question, we scroll all the way down here, and there's the best answer. But again, if I go here and I click on this, it takes me immediately to it, okay? So again, this is a really, really nice feature that Fitbit have put in, in their platform. Now, various community platforms offer this. Um, Discourse, for example, which is a, a community platform that I often recommend to my clients. Um, this is baked in. You can install a little plugin called the Solve plugin that does this. I would strongly recommend that you do this, okay? And one of the reasons why I recommend this is that forums offer a particularly distinct benefit over platforms like Slack when it comes to support. And what that is, is that if you go into Slack and ask a question, right? So if I went into Slack today and asked a question about let's say Fitbit, let's say they had a Slack channel, don't know if they do. But I asked a question about how do I improve my notifications on my on my, on my, uh, on my sense? Um, if there's somebody in the channel right there and then, and they answer the question, then great, I've got my solution. But if two weeks later, somebody else asks exactly the same question in Slack about their sense, um, and somebody answers that question, that's fantastic. But what if they don't answer that question? Well, you might think, well, they can go and find the Slack history and go and find the previous question and answer pair, you know, me and the other person um, in the Slack history. Well, Slack history is basically impossible to navigate, okay? So that means that they're basically dependent on having someone in the Slack channel to answer that question again. And this becomes very, very resource intensive for communities with real-time platforms like Slack or Discord or Gitter or various other ones, okay? So one of the major benefits of forums is that when we go to this kind of thing that we're talking about here, right, where camera notes goes and asks the question, and then you can click on go to the best answer. This whole page is being indexed on Google. So if you go and type into Google something like Fitbit heart rate and accurate and Fitbit sense, it will probably bring up this discussion. And again, this is one of the major benefits of forums is that every conversation in a public uh, forum community gets indexed on Google. And Google is the number one place where people go to find their, find solutions to their problems, right? So sure, if somebody goes into the Fitbit community and they've got a question about their heart rate on their Fitbit Sense, they can type it into the search box. But what's more likely is they're going to go into Google and type that question in. And then when, we, when we've got the ability to have a question posted and it's paired with an answer very quickly and easily, it means that people who are not members of your community can source those solutions on Google. It brings them into your community and that increases the number of page views in your community, increases the likelihood of people coming back into your community and it increases the likelihood of people signing up and joining your community, okay? So support is done very well in Fitbit and part of the reason is because they're using a forum platform. And let me be clear about this. I'm, I'm not on commission for forum platforms, okay? I've just found in my 22 years of building communities that forums are one of the better ways of building communities because of this integration with Google and other search engines, all right? All right, <laughs> let's now move on to our third item here. And this is recognition. Uh, recognition. Now, we as human beings are very incentivizable creatures, right? And what I mean by this is if you say, if you do this, there will be a reward, people will often do that, right? How many of you have been into a coffee shop and got one of those coffee stamps where every time you buy a coffee, uh, it, you get an extra stamp, and then when you get your 10th stamp, you get a free coffee. How many, would, how many of you would go back to the same coffee shop if the coffee's good? Well, many of us would, okay? And we see these everywhere. Airline incentive programs, trophies and video games, badges in Fitbit. We see uh, Karma in Reddit and various other places, okay? So recognition is really important, okay? Is that when we recognize people and we offer rewards to them, they're much more likely to come back. Now there's two broad ways in which you can 
recognize people. You can use either intrinsic rewards or extrinsic rewards. Now, extrinsic rewards are swag and physical goods and items, okay? I've got another video that you can go and check out about how to pick the right kind of swag. But one of the most valuable things that you can do in a community that costs basically no money is to use an, an, an intrinsic reward. And this is just recognizing people in your community as active members, okay? So if I go back to the community, let's go back to the, um, let's go back to our front page. Um, and here we can see most helpful authors, okay? Now here we can see Odyssey 13, all right? This person is a community legend, right? See how it says community legend. You can see that they've, um, They've, they've contributed 34,923 posts. They've received 19,000 upvotes and 3,101 best answers. So that's where the answer has been selected. So this person is super active, okay? Now, what does this mean, community legend? Well, I'm going to show you this little discussion where, uh, where they share about these rankings. This is called a ranking, okay? And they have a whole bunch of these different ranks. So first step, stepping up, keeping pace, walker, power walker, distance walker, tireless walker, world walker. OK, so you can see all of these different ranks as people kind of go up and participate more in the community. Right. But what determines these ranks is not just the number of posts that you make. OK, it's how many posts have been helpful. It's how many features you've suggested, which I'm going to get to in a, in a second. It's how many it's how many. Um, it's how many people have liked your content. It's how active you've been in the community. And this is really important because what Fitbit have done is they've created a system where they take into account all of these different elements, you know, the number of posts, the number of likes, the number of replies, the number of accepted solutions, how active, how often you kind of come back, how engaged you are in the community, and they give you a rank based upon that aggregate set of conditions. Now, back in the old days of communities, um, you could go up these different ranks, but it was largely based upon the number of posts that you made. So if you posted 50 times, then you get a rank. If you posted 100 times, you get a rank. If you posted 200 times, you get a rank, okay? And that's a terrible solution because people will game the system. They'll just post garbage just so they can get their post count up and they can go up the ranks. OK, but Fitbit have got this overarching kind of um, collection of different um, criteria that, that determine which which of the ranks that people have as they go up. OK, and I'd strongly recommend you do this in your community, because when we go back to the community, OK, if we go back to here, I'm sure that um, these people, Odyssey being one of them, um, Guy, Johnny Rowe, I'm sure these people love being in this list of most helpful authors, but what they do do here in the community is they will give them all kinds of benefits, right? And when you go into this particular topic, you can learn about this, that Fitbit will give them access to various product, you know, access to various product features, and then there'll be public recognition and swag and things like that. So what they're doing is they're using this recognition framework to identify the most active members of their community, and then they apply rewards to them outside of merely just recognition of the community itself. All right? All right, let's move on to our fourth one here. And this is feedback. Now, um, one of the most important things you can do as a company when building a community is use your community as an incredible place for ideas, okay? And sometimes these ideas may be uh, critical in nature. People maybe criticize your product or your service, and that's great because that gives us a sense of what our blind spots are, okay? But we want to create an environment where our community can offer feedback on what they would like to see um, in your products and your services. And this is what Fitbit do here. So I'm gonna go back to my community and I'm gonna click on this little burger icon up here and go to, where is it? Uh, hang on, feature suggestions, here. Now, what this is, is this is um, essentially, it's a, a, a category, right? And what happens is um, Fitbit community members can go in and add an idea for a feature and then it can be upvoted. So here, add sh hashtag comments to your sleep overview. So you can see here, somebody's added a feature idea and then um, it's received five votes, okay? So it's a very, very simple feature where people can kind of come in and here and do this. And then here at the top, coming soon, strain recovery score based upon heart rate variability. So here you can see that somebody came in and provided an idea and then Fitbit have built that idea um, and integrated it into the product, okay? Now what's neat about this is it provides a direct correlation between what the community is suggesting and what Fitbit is, sh is shipping. 
So I would strongly recommend you have some means, some structured means in which people can provide this kind of feedback. However, this is one thing you've got to be careful about, is it's all about setting expectations. You should never ever state to your community, whatever gets the highest number of votes will definitely be built and integrated into our products, okay? Because then you're creating essentially a social contract with your community and some of the top voted um, items, feature items that people may propose may be so general in nature that it's hard to kind of tie that down to a specific product outcome. Like, it wouldn't surprise me if in the community, Fitbit have had things like better battery life, right? Like better battery life is just a very broad blanket statement as opposed to 20% battery life in the Fitbit Surge, for example, okay? So having the this capability where people can submit features and have them upvoted is really good, but make sure you set the expectations very clearly in your community that this is essentially, it's a suggestions box, okay? It's a group suggestions box where people can go and provide ideas. But what you don't wanna do is just solicit the idea and never respond to them. What you wanna do is, and this is what Fitbit do, is to go in there and have a conversation with the person who submitted the idea to make sure that they kind of talk it through, they provide ideas, they illustrate what their idea is. Other people can go in there and join the conversation as well. So if you're running a company, you wanna make sure that your product team, your engineering teams are gonna be actively involved in that process. All right, let's move on to our final item here. And this, my friends, is governance. Let's spell that right, governance, yeah, okay. You see, when you build any kind of community, right, what's gonna happen? is members are gonna come and join your community. And some of them are gonna become very, very active, okay? And the way I always break this down, just to um, give you a sense, let's see if I can squeeze it in here, is most communities kind of go through this, okay? Let me see how much room I've got. There's three phases, okay? You've got the casual phase, regular, and core, okay? So in this phase, in the casual phase, this is when people are brand new to your community, not really sure if, uh, if it's worth it, if, if there's enough value in it for them, they're not really sure if they're gonna come back. When they come back regularly, they will then become regulars, okay? Obviously, because they're regular. <laughs> and this is when people come into the community every single week, they're asking questions, they're providing answers, they're actively participating, they find a lot of value out of it. And then a small number of people will become super active core members, and this is sized appropriately, okay? So these super active, very, very passionate members of your community will invariably care about the overall community experience, not just for themselves, but, but for other people as well. And it's these people that you wanna bring in to any kind of governance structure, okay? And what I mean by governance is that you create um, an organization or a, a group in your community, which are essentially your most active community members who can provide feedback with you and your team for how to make your, your community better every single day, all right? So if we go back to Fitbit, I wanna show you this. So this is the Fitbit Community Council, okay? And these are the members of the council. These, we, we can see some familiar names here, like Odyssey 13. These are, and Heather M, these are some of the most active members of the Fitbit community. And what they do is they come together and they provide suggestions for how to um, improve the community. And they get all kinds of different benefits in participating. They often get access to products before they come out. They get access to early features before they come out. They've got a very, very active mem uh, uh, communication and, uh, and relationship with the Fitbit team, okay? And what we can do is we can see if we click on read the requirements here, this shows you how people then come in and join the community, okay? So this is what they expect. You sign a deal to an NDA, you write 10 constructive personalized posts a month, you help grow our accepted solutions. So this is just very active participation. And then here is what you can expect. Sample products, private forum access, premium membership, special challenges and contest, Q&A with ambassadors, periodic coaching and training. They provide a really, really comprehensive set of value to these members when they come in and actively participate in the council, okay? And this is really, really important because what it does is it then means that the community, which is already working very well for all of these different reasons that we've talked down here, but what it means is that the community then has representation. It means that it's not just Fitbit calling the shots, that there are a set of members who have earned their place on this council because they've been active, they've participated, they've spent their time and energy making the community better. They're coming in and making the community be as representative as possible for everybody. And that to me is just the cherry 
on the pie. Okay, so, um, got the cherry on the cake, cherry on the top, I don't know, what's the reference? Cherry on something, cherry on a boot, who knows? Anyway, I hope you found this useful. Uh, kudos to the Fitbit team for doing such a great job with their community. If you found this video useful, be sure to hit that subscribe button and of course like this video as well it helps more people to see it be sure to share it with your friends share it with your fitbit friends who are using fitbit and i will see you on the other side peace out